Hello there. Dare to make a difference. Dare to make a difference in your life. Dare to make a difference in your marriage. Dare to make a difference in your finance. Dare to make a difference in your economy, in your nation. Dare to make a difference. You see, making a difference is not always the resultant effect of one's choice. No. It's not even the resultant effect of so many positive circumstances around a man. No. In many cases, in the life of every great man that has made a difference, if you check, you will discover that they made a difference simply because of forceful engagements channeled in the right direction to create the necessary difference in that domain. You see, life can be reading, reading with so much challenges, financial challenges, mental challenges, situational, marital, all kinds of challenges. And it can be so much so that it breaks the will of a man. It brings that man to his knees to a point of picking up an attitude of land helplessness. And such land helplessness can actually come as a result of four things. Number one, it can come based on the size of the problem the man is facing at the time. When a problem becomes so big and so overwhelming that it affects a man's mentality, it stops that man from seeing any other thing but his helplessness, his weakness. Such a man can come to a place of land helplessness. Number two, the span of the problem. You know, when a problem is on one side of your life, probably it's just your financial uh, um, area of life. Now, such a problem can easily be handled. Or maybe it is just marital. Now, one can handle that and say, okay, you know what? Other areas of my life are okay, but this area is not okay. But when one problem affects every area of your life, at least it affects 60 to 70% or 80% or even 100% of your life. Now, such a problem can have such mental overwhelming implications that it will bring a man to his knees and say, you know what, I give up. Now, the third one can be the duration of the problem in the man's life. A problem that lasts one week can easily be managed. A problem that lasts one month can easily be managed, no matter how overwhelming it is. A problem that even lacks six months can easily be managed. But when a problem begins to get to a year, or even five years, 10 years, 20 years, I mean, you have been fighting with one problem for close to 30 years. One can easily pick up an attitude of learned helplessness. And this is why, when one has picked up this attitude, number one thing is, you tell yourself, I can't help myself. I've discovered I am without the capacity to help myself. I've discovered that in my design, there's no propensity, there's no ability for me to be able to come out of this problem. So I accept it as part of my life. Number two, they also tell themselves that, hey, no one else can help me in this life. No one else is without the capacity, even when God comes into the picture. Yet, they still sustain that mental posture of land helplessness. Number three, they tell yourself that, hey, it is my destiny. It is my calling. And many a times, there are so many scriptures that they can use to justify the presence of that negative circumstance in their life. And say, you know what, let me accept it. Probably, it is my own cross. It is my own thorn in the flesh. It is my own body. Let me bear it. And that may not always be so. Number four is that it can lead them to a point of becoming suicidal. They begin to develop suicidal tendencies. You know, they begin to pull themselves away from people. You know what? I don't think I'm fit to be among people. This problem is way too much. There's no, no, nobody else going through this kind of problem. I am the only one going through it. I mean, if God truly really loves me, why should I be going through this? And they begin to feel like they are not useful in this life. And thought of killing themselves becomes raging in their mind. You see, learned helplessness can even affect you in delivering your leadership role. Probably you're a leader in your company or in your business or probably in your ministry. You are a leader. You are leading people. And because you have been defeated in this area of your life, many times you can take up that defeated mentality and bring it into your leadership role so that certain persons that you are asked to lead, the moment they become hard to lead, you might end up saying, you know what, I give up. I mean, I give up. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to do anything to help this person. It can also affect you with respect to business. You know, just as you give up in that area, you can easily give up with respect to business ideas, business proposals. 
it's not just about the failure or the success it's about the attitude you pick up now it is that attitude that can be transferred to every area of your life the same attitude that you used to win financially you can use it to win maritally you can use it to win spiritually you can use it to win in every area of your life and so if you pick up the wrong attitude from failure man it will cross into every other segment of your life and so you can easily give up on any business proposal even in ministry you can give up on god you can give up on people even in career hey i'm tired they don't like me in this my business i don't they don't like me in this my organization i'm like the bad egg you know what i give up i leave i sack myself i send in my resignation letter and such a thing will end uh, end up making you have more reason to feel more helpless in life this reminds me of a a story in the bible the story of a king um king joash you know king joash happened to have ruled israel for quite a while until the syrian king came to him and they grabbed all of them they captured all of them and turned them to slaves in their kingdom and this king having been subjected to ridicule having been emasculated dehumanized having been made to feel less than a king had come to that point of self or land helplessness when he heard that elisha prophet elisha was about to die he decided to go and meet him and he spoke to him he said my father my father the chariot of israel and the husband thereof and El prophet elisha seeing him knew what the problem was knew that he desired to be brought out of the shame he's in he knew that he desired that his kingdom be relieved from the captivity that they are going through in the hand of the syrian army and so he told him you know what pick up the bow and pick up the arrow position the arrow on the bow and the moment he did that elisha placed his hand on the hands of the king and told him to open the window that was faced eastward and he told him to fire the arrow into the air and as he did that he told him the meaning of the arrow he just fired is that this is the arrow of god's deliverance this is the arrow that will deliver israel this is the arrow of your testimony out of this issue and based on that now do this next instruction he told him of the arrows that are in your hand strike them on the floor strike these arrows these arrows that represent arrows of deliverance these arrows that represent the fact that you're not going to fight alone that god is that god is going to fight with you in this battle he says strike them on the floor as though the floor is your enemy imagine the floor to be the syrian army and use the arrows against them and the king did that which shocked elijah in fact it annoyed elijah the king struck the arrow only three times on the floor and the moment elijah saw this elijah was angry he said why three times knowing fully well that these arrows mean arrows of destruction for your enemy they are arrows for your own deliverance but they are arrows of destruction for your enemy why strike three times i didn't instruct for you to strike three times i asked you to strike the arrows i mean i should be the one telling you to stop you shouldn't just stop he struck three times what did that reveal? He revealed three things about King Joash that speaks to a situation of learned helplessness. Number one, his passion for freedom. Number two, the strength of his will in battle. Number three, his faith in God for winning the battle. So with respect to passion, striking it three times is a revelation that the king was no longer passionate about going into warfare. You know, when a man is sustaining land helplessness, right, it doesn't mean that he might not be able to fight, but he has limited his, himself in his mind. I can't go beyond these limits. This is the limit that my destiny, probably with respect to finance, I can't achieve more than a million in my life. Anytime I try to go beyond a million, something happens and I lose all the million. Anytime I try to have a child, my wife will have a miscarriage. Anytime I try to get that job, something happens before you know it i lose it the moment i try to get promotion before you know it i get sacked and so it seems the best option for me is just to re to remain employed and not get promoted that recurrent situation that overwhelmingly big situation 
that 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 trauma affects such a man to start thinking in the way he is thinking and that is not the plan of god for any man's life so with respect to passion he was weak to fight the battles in his life that's number one then number two with respect to we he, he couldn't go beyond the particular limits he was not ready for more battle he has been subjected by the enemy and with respect to faith in god he had very little faith in god because the man of god represented hope to him the fact that the man of god was about dying he felt like all hope is lost but i speak to you right now that regardless of the problem you are going through in your life you are coming out right now in the name of jesus it doesn't matter the size of that problem it doesn't matter how overwhelming it is it doesn't matter how recurrent it is it doesn't matter the span of the problem it doesn't matter how long that problem has been in your life you hear me that problem is ending right now in the name of jesus you are coming out right now in the name of jesus but for you to come out of that problem you need to do three things for you to dare to make a difference in your finance dare to make a difference in your marriage dare to make a difference in your family dare to make a difference in your school in your career for you to dare to make a difference in nigeria you know i celebrate nigerians for what we did on february 25th with respect to the presidential election before now the will of the nation have been broken and the nation have come to a point of land helplessness you know what we can't do anything i mean whatever you do it will still end up being the result they want to give their life but the nation, the whole nation came out and they decided they are going to vote one person. And as they did that, the whole nation shook. In fact, presently, the opposition, they are still shaking. Even though they've given them the certificate, but they are still shaking because very soon they have to return the certificate of return. So three things you need to do to come out of this problem. Number one, you must learn to believe differently and believe consistently. Yes, you must believe differently. You can't be believing the same way you're believing and end up, having the, uh, end up having a different result. No. You have to have a different mindset. You know, your mindset will always determine what you experience in life. And so, number one, you must sustain a different mindset and you must sustain it for all time, every day of your life. You must sustain the mentality of you are, a more, you are, you are more than a conqueror. You, 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 you are a difference-making agent. You are an agent for great things and not for small things. Number two, you must learn to talk differently and talk consistently. Yeah, you must talk differently. You must talk differently in your life. You can't be talking the same way. You can't be talking defeat and see victory. You can't be talking poverty and see prosperity. You can't be talking frustration and see jubilation. <laughs> it can't happen. It's an error. You must, your words must be expression of your thoughts. Your words must express your convictions you speak with authority but come rain come shine i'm winning no devil can stop me come rain come shine i'm taking the bull by the horn and i'm winning in this battle i'm taking that new job i'm getting promoted i'm getting elevated i'm getting celebrated i'm getting enthroned no devil can pull me down i'm getting that job i'm making that money i'm crossing that financial limit i'm crossing that age i'm getting married no devil can stop me you've got to believe and talk differently and consistently it doesn't matter who's talking you down talk consistently let them know this is where you stand and it's either it or it nothing else and lastly you must learn to act differently don't just believe don't just talk but act differently and act consistently listen to me your actions are a revelation of your standing with respect to your conviction your actions See, it doesn't matter how many times the problem comes. It doesn't matter the size of the problem. It doesn't matter the spread of the problem. It doesn't matter the recurrency of that problem. Hear me? Sagale brandi hayabada. Shilo krosha prada. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you take up the right action every time. Uh, even if I fall seven times, I stand seven times. Even if I lose it seven times, I get up seven times and I engage seven times. I will keep engaging until I win. Until I win, it has not ended. Until I achieve that destiny, it has not ended. So if it means you are going to engage it alongside prayer, engage your prayer. If it means you are going to engage alongside seed, engage your seed. Even if you have done everything you are supposed to do and nothing seems to have happened, keep doing the same thing. Keep doing the same thing. You see, there's a situation where 
doing something in the same way is madness. But there's a situation where doing something the same way is not madness. Rather, it's actually the path to greatness. How do I mean? Now, when you know what you are doing is right, they are the right things to be done. When you know that what you are doing, they are the right principles to engage. Listen, don't, look, don't give up. Keep doing the same thing. You are eventually going to come out a winner. And when you win, celebrate God. Celebrate His goodness in your life. For He always wants you to be a winner. God bless you. Thank you for your time.